The next piece is Fires of Passion, which is our very lofty name for taking an escape, basically a um, straitjacket escape, and trying to make it a uh, kind of a more uh, erotic, kind of passionate piece. So it wasn't just about the, uh, you know, getting out of a straitjacket. It was really to make it so it uh, had a little bit of a story to it, not much, but just a little tiny bit. Um, we did it kind of as a rite of passage in kind of Brazilian uh, rainforest setting. With big projections um, on that big screen that's up in the air, we cut a big um, kind of a backplate uh, video and film to project on that screen that was up, up in the sky there. You can see it up on top of the frame. Uh, so it all ran counterpoint as kind of a background to what I was doing in the foreground for the escape. That girl that did a great job, she filled in for uh, another famous supermodel that uh, decided not to show up. We don't want to mention her name, but uh, anyway, this girl did a great job at the last minute. We got her the day before. play my semi-love interest in this uh, escape. The escape is very, very real. The fire um, on the ropes was enhanced with uh, gasoline, which we sprayed on all the ropes. I think I insulted these guys. They got them really pissed off at me, so they'd really throw me around a lot. I think they enjoyed this a lot. And I'm really getting strapped up pretty tight. We had this uh, French's mustard bottle that we used in rehearsal to, to put the um, kerosene on the ropes. And I don't know, later on you'll probably see that we actually wrapped it in burlap and it ended up on on the show. We added some extra things. We put straps around my arms. And, um, gave it some extra depth. We rehearsed this over and over, um, uh, wherever I performed around the world, uh, we had a crane outside the theater. We'd bring the audience outside the theater after every show. And I would do this without the spikes uh, below. The only time I ever did it with the spikes was the night of this taping. And this knife, um, usually, you know, when the OJ trial was happening, I would make a joke about the knife, but put the knife back in the Bronco. And, uh, there's that graffiti wall case covered in burlap. It's amazing how the things that we, the graffiti wall is an illusion we do in the show. You see there, oh, there's the French's mustard bottle there. And this guy did a great job of lighting this stuff. I love that. Look at that. He's very happy. We're strapping me into it. And those ropes are covered in, um, uh, in cloth and cotton and um, in gasoline. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And I'm up there. One time my leg actually caught on fire uh, during, the, during the performance of it. And they had to roll me in blankets and stop the escape. Yeah, it was a Target Center in Minnesota. It actually caught on fire. Yeah, we did this every day after the show, and we added more and more fire, more ropes to burn and so forth, outside the theater. Uh, more and more things would happen. Yeah, this, um, there's a moment in here which is really inspired by uh, uh, Alan Allen. Alan Allen is the guy that um, was the first guy to use fire and to have a burning rope hang from a single burning rope. And uh, there's a, 
good friend of mine who uh, actually gave us permission to have fire above me because that was really his thing. We added three ropes, so we'd have this sequence of one going and putting a little more fire on the next one and having them burn one by one, which created, I think, a little more excitement. But having the, uh, uh, the extra risk of having to escape before the ropes burn through is, is my pal Alan Allen from, from England. This piece here is from the, um, inspired from the Houdini movie, the Tony Curtis movie, Just seeing that hand come out of that, uh, out of the jacket. Houdini used to do this, uh, no fire, no spikes, uh, but did it for, uh, for free outside of theaters to get publicity. And that's me really screaming. Looking down uh, uh, and seeing those spikes and just imagining myself getting skewered was not a, not a very fun thing. That's a little uh, Houdini move there. And I'm out. This next piece is definitely an Alan Allen shtick. This, this little fall right here. There you go. Pretty scary. There's tens of thousands of people there watching this, feeling the heat from this explosion. I'm about to be Michael Jackson there. No, not quite. Hair did not burn. You can see that background on the screen all through this. We really timed the burning of those ropes, you know, and it really never worked perfectly right until this one show. It was one of those things where it was kind of a happy accident. Everything worked out exactly right, and uh, there's no safeties, and um, off to go to take a steam bath. It was pretty exciting for the audience. It was a real, real event. And yes, don't try that at home. And here we have some more of our props and our, our big set. Like those windows above, again, are created in the computer. We took them from a picture in Paris and put some clouds going through. What I love the most is interacting with the audience. You never know what to expect. It's different every night, and the weirdest things can happen. Thank you very, very much. You know, something really weird has been happening to me. I keep getting these premonitions. You know when you think of something, and then it comes true later on? Well, I've been able to predict graffiti. Yeah. This piece is the graffiti wall, which is really inspired by the idea that which do a mind reading effect without having little billets or, or, or little envelopes or cards or any of those things. We're going to do a mind reading effect that involved everything. It involved uh, uh, a drawing of, from somebody from the audience, names, phone numbers, uh, um, trying to make the best possible mind reading effect we possibly could and using. Um, an unfortunate piece of uh, our society, which is graffiti, but it did allow us uh, to have a very big image that everybody in the audience could see. We had bricks and graffiti and paint, and um, it was a good opportunity for me to have fun with the audience, which I really enjoyed doing. Also, this was different every night. You know, you never knew what the audience would say, what they'd draw. Um, you know, uh, we have...